We always have you covered in the shallows with redfish, snook, and trout. Now this week, we're exploring the deep, uncharted waters for groupers and snappers that you rarely hear about. Tonight, we're going deep dropping here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Hello Floridians and welcome back to the Florida Insider Fishing Report. We're taking you into the month of August and by we, I mean Captain Tommy Derringer from the Alto Equipment Northeast Region and I. Thanks for being here and filling in for Rick this week. Thanks for having me. Uh, I, I ch channeled my inner Rick with my Ricky Red tonight. I see that. I'm very proud of you. He'd be proud <laughs> as well. Yeah. Well, we hope everyone had a successful yummy mini season and if you couldn't get out there, good luck for opening. But this week, we're pulling the crew together and going deep dropping. Tommy and someone who is always there for us is Dave Farrell at the CCA Workbench. So Dave, are we drowning in the deep end today or what? Yes, we are. I got a little disco <laughs> ball working over here. Is that what that is? Yeah, Ooh. that's what they call that. A little yeah. disco light. For some S words. Got to have the light things. or you're not going to get a bite. There you go. Yeah. Look at you rhyming. Deep dropping. We're off to a good start. We're, yeah. We're we going to lean heavy on Dave tonight. He's the deep drop man. Yes, he is. The master of deep <laughs> dropping over there. All right. To start off, we're dropping our lines into the Casa Vieja Southwest region where Captain Ronnie Houston is on top of the bottom. Tell us what we're bringing up, Ronnie. Well, truly, it's really a pleasure tonight to have to deal with the famous Tommy Derringer. Uh, <laughs> seeing much, Tommy, it's good for you being in there. You know, bigger boats, bigger motors, bigger fuel tanks. In the last couple of years, guys are making the runs. You know, in my region, it's generally done in depths of about 500 to 1,100 feet, according to Captain Mike Avenon. But you can start as close to about 450 feet, just west of Naples. And the common areas are really... Fort Jefferson to 40 miles north, otherwise known as the Pulley Ridge, and a lot of guys are making them runs now. The common species are blue line, golden tilefish, rosefish, queen and silk snapper, along with the snowy yellow edge, and rock kind snap, uh, snapper. You can really purchase deep drop rigs from r, r Tackle. It'll save you the time and effort. They're already rigged to save you time and work. And the legs you're probably gonna need are anywhere from one to five pounds, depending upon the current. And you're basically using the same common baits as if you were fishing a little closer. You know, squid and live pit fish are the best baits, but Mike Avedon tells me there's nothing like cut bonito will also work well too. And I got a prime example of some fish that are being caught in the region making those runs. A couple good pictures there. You know, uh, still on the offshore side, the red snappers and the groupers, that bite has been great. Uh, mixed bag from Naples to Fort Myers Beach. Right now the depths are anywhere from 150 to 190 feet and you're targeting structure with bait stacks, especially picking your moderate weather days to make them run. Now the live pinfish and the squid have been the best baits, seven to nine old circle hooks and 60 to 80 pound fluorocarbon. But if you don't have the desire to make that long run, guys are catching red groupers right now in depths of 50 to 75 feet fishing structure, whether it be big or small, but there's a catch to that program. You're catching a lot of smaller grouper, but you will get some occasional size keepers mixed in and the best baits in those depths right now are just simply your cut baits, your cut herring, sardines, or squid. I got a nice picture of a nice big grouper that was caught while fishing with Captain Mike Avenon out in those 150 to 190, uh, 190 feet depths. Uh, before I go inshore, got to give a big shout out to my guy over at Berkeley, Steve. It's a pleasure working with him, you know, with the new hard baits that came out with iCast. I get to do the testing, I get to play around with the product. 90% of my fishing is done with artificial, so big shout out to uh, Steve from Berkeley. On the inshore report, the snook. We'll be getting a lot of rain. Everglades backcountry due to all the rain. We have received the amount of fresh water, a lot of fresh water. You can start as close as the boat ramp, outdoor resorts, and you can run all the way to Lostman's River. But you want to concentrate on fishing those windier days and lower tides, especially with easterly winds and the tides that we're having this week. Wind blowing shorelines, points with current, and feeder creeks. Now, when you're in those creeks, concentrate on the bends in the creeks. Fish are waiting for baits to be flushed through. Baits of choice right now for me have been the Berkeley Chapo 90s, the uh, Berkeley Hijackers, a new color, the Bass Assassin Sea Shad, Texas Brig, and Electric China in color, along with poppers and chugging lures, and nothing beats the Berkeley War Pigs, half ounce. If you find those fish on those creek turns, once you find them, they seem to be stacked up. And I got a prime example of a nice fish that was recently caught in the southwest region. 
last species is going to be, and due to the rain, the juvenile tarpon actually throughout the whole region. Plenty of fresh water flowing through the region from the north all the way to the south. Now your Peace River, your Caloosahatchee River, your Imperial River, and your Fakahatchee River, as well as lee shorelines close to where these rivers dump out. Now the prime time to get out would be early morning or just before dark or afternoon after the afternoon rainstorms. Once you see these fish, you want to approach these fish with stealth. Try not to make too much noise. The baits are relatively simple. They can be prop baits, chugging lures, flies, orange paddle tails, white chartreuse bucktails, especially the brighter colors like chartreuse, pink, orange, white, or black and gold. And I got a nice picture of a nice golden juvenile tarpon caught while fishing with Josh Greer up in the Puna Gorda region. Weather is looking good for the weekend. Ron, thing you want to concentrate on is getting out and beating the storms. Get out, catch you some fish. Thanks, Ron. Man, always an awesome report from you, Ron. Here are the Caddy Can hot spots for the Southwest region. Inshore, redfish in Bull Bay, Turtle Bay, East Wall, and Matt Lachey early in the morning using topwater walk the dog lures and cut baits later in the day. And then offshore, lane snapper and red groupers in Gordon's Pass to Sanibel in 55 to 75 feet using a variety <coughs> of cut baits. The squid seems to be the best. Well, Ronnie seemed pretty happy that you were hosting this man, week. What a shout wow, out. that was man. great. Good for you. Wow. All right, in the Fish Bites East region, deep dropping for a certain species is possible as long as you find the right bottom. So if you're looking for grouper, check out the wrecks and reefs. But if you're looking for tilefish, find some mud. But don't take my word for it. Take it away, Holiday. Yeah, you know, Bree, the deep drop bite is pretty consistent in my region, and you can do it two ways. You can do it over mud bottom for tile fish and rose fish and barrel fish, or you can go over the wrecks for the deep water grouper species. Most anglers use electric reels, three or four hook circle rigs with up to 15 pounds of weight, depending on the current. And as a rule, the best tile fish action in my region takes place in anywhere from like 500 to 800 feet of water. You just have to find that mud bottom. Um, Find the mud, use enough weight to bounce the lead in and out of the mud, and that creates those little puffs in the sand that attract the fish. And for bait, it's pretty hard to beat a, a whole squid or a chunk of squid, but anything from a strip of bonita to a chunk of mullet or ladyfish will work. And if you're targeting the grouper species, you just need to track down some of the deep water wrecks, uh, and you can fish Warsaw grouper, or, or you can work the reefs out there. And atolls like uh, around Push Button Hill off Stewart, there's a lot of snowy grouper off that. Uh, the average tile fish is going to be like five to ten pounds, where the grouper can range, you know, ten pounds snowies up to 100 pounds or more wreck fish. Um, so deep dropping is kind of what you target. Uh, I got a photo that's um, Carl Fleming. He got that nice uh, golden tile fish off of Jupiter. He was in 600 feet of water, and that fish ate a whole squid. The other bite going on is a dolphin bite, which remains kind of hit or miss, but you can improve your odds by covering a lot of water and working your way offshore where there's, you're more likely to be the first boat to put a bait in front of the weed lines. Inshore on the weeds and in that less than 100, 150 feet, you're going to find a lot of smaller fish. Offshore, you'll find, find the bigger slammers and gaffers. The weed remains thick, making it kind of difficult to troll. So most boats have either been drifting or, you know, grabbing some binoculars and kind of running and gunning and stopping every mile or so to look for floating debris or diving birds. When you see something that looks good, you just run over to it and either troll baits by that area or pitch out live baits. Um, you want to give it a little bit of time for, for the fish to find your bait. If you don't get a bite, move on. I give it 10 to 15 minutes at the most, and then I'm out of there. Average dolphin right now is 5 to 15 pounds, but we're seeing them up to about 30 pounds. I have a photo of a, of a nice dolphin that Jonathan Anderson caught. Ooh. Caught that fish in 150 feet of water. He was just drifting along a rip in that in the middle of all that scattered weed when that fish ate a live pilcher. Nice. Mike, tell us about the tarpon. Well, the resident tarpon bites starting to heat up in, in the Indian River, in the St. Lucie River, and in the Loxahatchee River. So places like the Boy Scout Camp up in the Loxahatchee, um, Harbor Ridge, and the in the St. Lucie River and the Crossroads and Big and Little Mud Creeks um, in the Indian River, all producing fish. The best action has been, you know, dawn to mid morning and then again late in the afternoon. Uh, the midday bite can be good if it's on an incoming tide, but that heat has really shut down the midday bite on the outgoing tides. Uh, so later in the week, next week, you should see a pretty good midday bite. There's also been a good number of fish moving around the bridges and inlets at night. Live mullet have been the hot bait. 
in any of those places. Uh, but thread fins, bunker, and filters will also work. And you can also cast to the rolling fish, uh, throw like a four inch Houdini colored saltwater sea shad. And the average tarpon right now is anywhere from 35 to 80 pounds, but I've seen them up to 150 pounds. I have a photo uh, that Captain Cody Rubner of Jensen Beach, he got that nice tarpon on a bridge and that fish ate a live mullet. The other bite we got going, the wind is finally laid down. That's really fired up the catch and release snook fishing on the beach. The Hope Sound Wildlife Refuge, Bob Graham Beach, Walton Rock, Pepper Park, um, all those areas are seeing good concentrations of fish. The best action has been from first light until about 10 a.m. That's when the fish can't get a good look at your lure or fly. In the middle of the day, it's almost all a live bait game. At the same time, all the inlets in the region and the Lake Worth and Juno Piers have good concentrations of snook on them. In the inlets, live bait's king. Thread fins, pilchards, croakers, sand perch, and sardine are going to be your top baits. And the average snook is 8 to 20 pounds. I have a photo, my last photo, uh, Elizabeth Willard and Lori Lau, they teamed up to catch this overslot snook. They were fishing in the St. Lucie Inlet, and that fish ate a live threadfin. Nice, Mike. That's a nice snook. Tell us about the bass. Well, despite the summer heat, the bass fight on Headwaters Lake in Keenanville is pretty steady. I was talking to Captain Nathan Shellen of OkeechobeeBassFishing.com. He said you want to be on the water in the dark and throwing topwater prop baits, frogs, or swim baits like a you know, bass assassin, bluegill flash colored boss shiner. Work those baits along the edges of the hydrilla or the lily pads or in the holes in the grass. As the sun gets up, the fish are pushing under those hydrilla mats, particularly out in the open water. So you want to just find those open holes the deeper water and fish the edges of the holes with either a June bug colored tap out worm, rig Senko style, or a hematoma shad colored RSB worm worked on a Carolina rig. The, also, the other the live shiner bites been fantastic in the canals and along the edges of the hydrilla. You want to use a larger hook or just a small split shot to get that bait down a bit. It seems like the water is really hot on top. If you can get down a foot or two, you can really get that, that shiner bite going. Right now, it's a 20 to 40 fish morning with the average bass one to four pounds. But guys are still catching them to eight or nine pounds on headwater. And, it, and a lot of really nice five, six, seven pound fish every day. So Headwaters Lake just continues to be one of the hottest lakes, not just in Florida, but in the country. Heck yeah, Mike, that sounds like a lot of fun. Here are Mike's uh, hot spots for the TH Marine East region. Inshore, redfish, flounder, Spanish mackerel, and snook on the South Jetty in Fort Pierce. Saltwater assassin, gray mm. ghost, sea shads, spoons, lipless plugs, and live pilchards for those guys. And then offshore, sailfish, dolphin, and wahoo in 90 to 150 feet of water off of Jensen Beach. Live goggle eyes and threadfins or trolled ballyhoos. Way to go. Sailfish, dolphin, wahoo. That's like music to my ears. A lot of good stuff going on. Love that. All right, get ready to reel in the Star Tron Central West region coming right up. But first, Dave is chatting us up at the CCA workbench for Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques. Dave, are you going to be mid today? Never. I've got a couple stories. (laughs) I've got a few stories. I hope I'm not mid. You'll never be mid to me. That's a young yeah. It's a young term we just yeah. learned. Yeah, my son throws it at me all the time. Don't be mid. No be we, mid. No mids. We'll be back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Sirius XM Marine. Weather, fish mapping, entertainment. Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Real legends. Everything you need to live life local. 10. Let the battle begin. Casa Vieja Lodge. Five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Stiffy. Innovators in shallow water performance. And Daiquiri Deck. Food, drinks, friends. All right, Dave, we're here at the CCA Workbench for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques. We yes, got sir. some stuff that I don't know a whole lot about, so well, you got to tell me about it. You're joining me right along with you there, okay. pal. I mean, I've done it a few times. I've actually, I actually had a really good trip once, but I'll tell you. Um, 
deep dropping is is used to be done a lot by the commercial guys. They'd go out and catch a bunch of snappers and groupers in deep water. They had the gear, you know, electric stuff. And there wasn't a lot of recreational guys doing right until, because the, yeah. the gear was real expensive. You know, six seven grand for a rod and reel and all that back then. Uh, it, the price has come down a lot, and the advent of braided line made a huge difference because you know you have to have huge spools when you're using monofilament line. All right. And but you can use if you're using and braided sinks, line. Right? Sinks fast. Yeah, braided line doesn't absorb water. It sinks fast, and it you can feel every tick. And I found that out right when Spider Wider first came out. This first Spectra line, and a big spider wire. It was all over iCast and everything. Yep. Uh, yeah. We went out on a trip that week uh, to Bimini with Ron Chapman, Dave Workman, and uh, Doug O'Lander, Sport Fishing Magazine, and we all had these big Italian reels. Uh, and filled with spectrum, and we were dropping in 1,900 feet of water, deep dropping. Wow, that's and deep. 1,900 feet is the Statue of Liberty with a football field on top of it. That's how deep we were fishing. That's deep. And we were using 15 pounds of weight, and with that 50-pound spectra, I could feel every tick of every little fish ticking on that 15, 1,900 feet down. Yeah, it's because it's so tick, sensitive. Tick, 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 right. tick, 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 and then the big fish would come and eat it. And we were catching wreck fish and wenchmen and palm frits and goblin sharks, all these really weird cool fish, stuff, yeah. yellow-eyed snappers, silk snappers, uh, wreck, you know, big scum props, which is a kind of a bluefish looking Never heard of that wreck one. fish. Yeah, we and we caught nine world records in three days. Wow. It was a, an amazing trip, and I learned a lot. You know, Ron Chapman is a legend in the big game world, and he's also really good at deep dropping. Yeah, so like when it. we're doing it out here, you're going to be using, you want to get yourself an R&R &R Tackle uh, deep drop rig. He makes them in all different kinds of sizes uh, from all from a little 5 aught up to a 10 aught. The 5 aughts are great for the blue line tile fish. Uh, some of the little other small fish down there, the red uh, red bellied black fish or whatever, rose fish, it's called yeah, red bellied yeah. and and. They're, they're really good to eat, those little fish. You know, they, they don't look that great, but they're they're really good the, to eat. Most and of those can, deep species are good Yeah, to and eat. you can yeah. catch tons of them. They're not regulated. You can catch a bunch of them, and, and a bunch of them makes a good meal. What's up with the swivel in there? Tell me about that. Well, you know, Ray Rocher made these things, to and, and he spends a lot of time doing this. So he found out that if he puts a swivel in that hook, he catches 50% more fish. Wow. Because what happens is when you... Hit that electric reel. Well, most of these people are using electric reel. They weren't dumb mm -hmm. like me back there, you know, <laughs> cranking, your arm out. cranking in 1,900 feet. They use a big electric reel, nice hooker electric reel, or you know, something attached to a, a pen. Uh, there's all kinds of them. You can go out and find them. But when you hit that button, you know, you're jerking those fish up off the bottom, pretty good clip. And if they're spinning around on on a hook, they probably them, come off. Yeah, they can spin right off. And that's what happens a lot if you don't have those good swivels. And that's Ray cool. makes really Very good cool. rigs with all the nice swivels on there, a good glow rig as well. So yeah. Tell, so what, we got some lights? Correct. You're going not, deep, you need some light. Like I said before, if you don't have a light, you're not going to get a bite. And it's the same way with sword fishing in really deep water. All the fish down there in that really deep, deep water, they're attracted to little lights. A lot of the fish make their own light, you know, but it's called bioluminescence. Right. And the, a lot of them will have little... Uh, lights right here underneath their eyes and and other fish will crazy looking fish yeah other fish will keen in on that and, and, and are attracted to those lights so when you got that thing down gonna there get their attention yeah you want to have it down there now a lot of the fish we're, we're trying to catch golden tile fish as holiday was saying you want to be in the mud in the you know mud. you want to yeah, be in the that. muddy areas you know when you have a anything any place up here on the east coast where you have the gulf stream it's flowing to the north all the time if you can get on the back side of some of those humps and stuff where it settles, where all that mud settles, a flat area behind a big hump is a great place You're to target. You were telling me tile fish get down in little yeah, holes. Yeah, they dig down in there and make a burrow, and when they see something go by, you know, up top, they'll reach out and get it. And what, what you're doing is you're trying to try not to go on the days when it's burning current, you know, four right, knot current. Make it a lot tougher, it's yeah. really hard. You want to use something where you can, you know, you've got. Uh, uh, a, a little less of a current. I was very fortunate the one time that I did it over in Bimini. We had zero current, oh, so we're just yeah. dropping straight down. And and a lot of the fellows over on the Gulf Coast that don't have that Nero's current, you can get away with five pounds of weight versus the ten. You got to go a little bigger pounds. up my ass where the current's Correct. ripping. Yep. And you want that thing to if you're fishing for those tile fish, you want it to. You want the rig to lay down. A lot of times the guys will put another weight up at the top of their rig 
up by the light. So the whole rig, once it gets down, the whole rig on the lays bottom. on the bottom. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're, you're wanting it to bounce as you drift along. If you're in the hard bottom stuff, you know, you're fishing for groupers, they like to hang in a lot of, uh, you know, hangy spaces, you know, places where you can get hung up. Right, which you know? wouldn't be fun when you're down there. No, that, and Ray be... Rocher, the guy who made this rig, he says, you want to you try to be on top of your rig, but when you, when you, you want to get it down to the bottom and then crank it up a little bit, you know, they'll come up and get the stuff. You know, not like a tile fish. You know, they'll come up off the bottom and, and, and get hooked. Hmm. So, but when you're fishing there, you want to pull it up off the bottom. As soon as you get a, a bite, pull off 10 or 15 feet, let it go back down, you know, let him eat it really good, and then hit that button, zip, and he's, you're so gonna it actually, hook him. So yeah, it gets, that makes sense, gets yeah, you in know, the corner. Kind of drop it back like you'd be dropping a bait to, to a blue marlin or whatever. Let him go a little bit, hit that button, jerk him off the bottom, and you won't hung, hang your weight And up. you got something good to eat. Yeah, hopefully. Wow, yeah. I'm That's impressed. That's a lot of good info. Deep prep daddy over here. <laughs> I learned a lot, man. <laughs> I did that too. Was good stuff. Good job, Dave. All right, it's Electric over in the Star Trek Central West region, so let's get our deep drop on with the one and only Captain Jeff Page. Well, you know, the deep dropping in the Startron Central West is a little shallower than deep dropping in the Atlantic. For instance, I hope last week while guys were out running to troll for marlin, blue and white marlin, that they were pressing save on their machines when they would run over big bait shows and stacks in that six to 900 feet, because that's our deep drop. Uh, range and then you can get a little deeper but six to nine hundred feet you know you're going to want to use an electric reel chicken rigs you can use squid cut bait or live bait i don't believe it really matters when you're dealing with this and captain chris seeger and captain tim no both agree 65 to 80 pound braid is plenty good an 80 pound fluorocarbon leader up to 100 is good 16 ounces of weight is pretty much the standard for around here. And if the current's a little stronger, then you're gonna add a little more weight. Another key to finding the good stuff out there in that deep drop region is paying attention to big bait shows and also bottom ridges off your fish mapping services. That's one way you're gonna find that yellow edge. I know people mention that. The snowy scamp, uh, the snowy grouper, the scamp, Kitty Mitchell, along with Tilefish, and then the one that everybody's real excited about over here is that beautiful red queen snapper. I've got a couple photos tonight. Uh, one of Captain Randy Powell, who's out of Venice, and then the second one of the crews of Tight Lines, which is Captain Chris Seeger and Captain Stacy Caps, and they're really good, along with my good friend Captain Tim No of Offshore, Offshore Ventures. He specializes in deep drop trips. So if you're ever interested in doing it in my region, I have a couple captains for it. Staying offshore, the red grouper, it seems like the hotter the water gets, the better the red grouper fishing gets. Now, that being said, you gotta get out a little deeper, 110, 120 feet of water, but pretty much all the hard bottom areas out there in that depth of water, you put down a live bait, a live pin fish, or even a dead frozen sardine, and you don't get bit pretty quick, move on to your next spot. Because they're feeding Captain Bo Johnson out of down, uh, down south out of uh, Boxham Charters, and Captain Tim No again up here in Bopin having no problem limiting out. And my red grouper photo tonight is really a cool picture. It's the whole crew on Captain Bo Johnson's boat, and I believe they all got red groupers in their hands. Very nice, Jeff. Nice. Tell us about the tarpon, man. All right, the tarpon fishing, you know, it's that late summer bite, Tommy. They're out there along the beach, but they're not showing and they're not all bunched up together because they're not mating or spawning anymore. They're just out there kind of chilling out. And you're better off getting out there and putting on your spot lock on your Rodan trolling motor and then just putting dead baits out around the bottom. And if you cannot use a weight, it seems like you get a better bite. Guys like to use the menhaden here or a dead threadfin or ladyfish. If you're into nighttime fishing around the docks and passes of Longboat Pass and New Pass, real good. That Berkeley 110 stick shad in that pearl white color works real well. Got a, I got two photos of the same fish tonight. That's Captain Clark Wright sneaking a picture of the fish jumping. Somebody took a picture 
of him taking a picture. And then the last one is of him pulling the tarp in both sides. And my last uh, species tonight, redfish, I keep getting good reports. And I know it's because of these afternoon thunderstorms. We just had one now. And the redfish are bunching up in the mouth of Manatee River around all your docks and spoil islands in Palmasola and Terracia Bay. And you can use a cut pinfish underneath the mangroves, or if you're into throwing artificials, I like using that white fish bite shrimp on a quarter ounce jig head that I can skip way under there and then barely move it out of there. Do you feel that thump? Again, the braided line helps. My last photo tonight is with a happy young angler that was part of the Sarasota fish camp out of Sarasota with Captain Devin York. Nice. Cutie. Yeah. yeah, he looks stoked, man. All right, thank you, Jeff. Great report as always. Here are the Daiquiri Deck hotspots for the Central West region. Inshore, fish for speckled trout on deeper grass flats in Sarasota and South Tampa Bay. Try a white paddle tail or plastic shrimp tied to an eighth ounce jig head, one foot under a popping cork. And then offshore, red snapper will, might remain strong in 110 to 150 foot of water. Live pinfish as well as cut sardines on a standard bottom rig. That's going to get the job done. I love when those kids are up here with their fish. It just makes me smile. It makes it's me so good, happy. I don't think time. anybody can smile when they see a kid holding That's a fish true. smiling. It's, it's best. like, it really is. I want to see you try not to smile. All right, listen up, Floridians. If you want to win your share of $500,000 in prizes just for catching fish, the West Marine Star Competition presented by Yamaha runs through Labor Day and offers anglers and non-anglers a shot at some winning some great prizes and cash just for catching fish and picking up trash. But you can't win if you are not a CCA member and registered in the competition. So get on board and check out the details at CCAFLstar.com. Main thing is, Get registered. Get if you're registered. a CCA member and you catch that fish and you're not There's registered, it's a lot of good stuff to be going I mean, to be get registered. That's real it. sad. That's all I Gotta can do say. It. All right, come with us as we discover the depths of the Anmar ASV Keys and Real Legends Central East regions coming right up, plus another Chef Michelle Bernstein recipe mm. you're not going to want to miss. So stay hooked and we'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by. Power Pole, Total Boat Control. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Bahio Sunglasses, Blue Light Blocking, Radically Clear Lenses. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventure. R&R Tackle, from our tackle box to yours. Florida Coast Equipment, your local Kubota dealer. Coast to coast, we've got you covered. And Garmin, plot your paradise. Well, we're back and Chef Michelle Bernstein visited our studio to bring us another tasty recipe. And Tommy, I don't know about you, but uh, my go-to for just about any fish in raw form is pokey. Oh yeah. That yeah, is, yeah so tough. let's see how Michelle whips it up. Let's take a look. So guys, you can see our official chef of the Insider Fishing Report, Michelle Bernstein, is with us today. And you know, Michelle, so many times you go to somebody's house for a party, and it's not a main course sit down kind of a place. Mm -hmm. You go there and there's a variety of appetizers, as we would say. I like to call that noshing or noshing. grazing. Um, it's just great. You could just kind of dip and chip and exactly. stuff. And <laughs> so speaking of dip, you know, we have, we are smoking fish dip is uh, they make a variety of different flavors. One of my favorites this week, I want to talk about the Wahoo. They have gluten-free crackers that they've created. It's all a collective company that Such they- a cute name, too. Yes. I love that. And their food is just so good. Uh, they have a variety of retail stores all over Florida. And this is just perfect to set at the table to keep your guests busy or your family while you're cooking dinner. Right. You know? Whether you're chopping tuna whether you're chopping tuna or not. So we're chopping tuna. We're making tuna poke. And this dish is actually my husband's recipe. Yeah. I don't know if I got it right. <laughs> I know it's gonna taste good. If I messed it up, honey, I'm sorry. I'm just making it the way I like it. But anyway, uh, he lived in Hawaii a long time, so okay. I take his word for it. We have a little bit of very finely minced ginger. ginger. Just a little bit of it, fresh ginger. Mm -hmm. We've got some julienne uh, sweet onions. These are Vidalia onions, so they're really good and sweet. Let's not go too crazy, but you do want that crunch in there. Next thing we're gonna add is um, some wakame. 
Okay. Which is seaweed salad. And this you can just buy already prepared seaweed salad. It's one of my favorite things. Do you like seaweed salad? I do. Oh, good. Because I love seaweed. Yes. Crunchy, black, green, whatever color. All right. For all the liquids, we've got a little bit of toasted sesame oil. Mm -hmm. Don't go crazy because that stuff is potent. A little bit of chili oil. Don't mm -hmm. go crazy, this stuff is even more potent, but we do like it a little spicy, at least you do. And then just some really good soy sauce. I try to go for really good quality soy sauce. I also go for a little bit of a lower, lower sodium in my soy. Do you mind mixing that, Rick? Sure. And we have this bowl set, as you can see, over a little bit of ice water to keep the poke cold as possible. So I'm actually gonna make you what I call a poke bowl, what everybody calls a poke bowl mm -hmm. nowadays. We've got some, uh, you can use jasmine or sticky rice mixed with some quinoa. I do 50-50 of both. We cook them separately and mix them together. And we'll just put that on the bottom of the bowl. And this is so great for lunch because it's filling, but it's also really healthy and happens to be really quite delicious. Did I do that good? I think you're perfect. Thank right. you, Rick. All right, so we're gonna spoon a little bit of this poke and then we're just gonna top it off with a little bit of toasted sesame seed. And Rick, I gave you some chopsticks if you wanna dig in. I know it's not gonna be as good as yours. Of course it is, because but... you made it. <laughs> you know, everybody loves your cooking better than we love our own cooking ourselves, uh, right? I don't know, you know, my son would rather eat out, to be honest with you. What? Yeah, yeah, I think he's had enough. At 10 years old, he's done with me. Good? Yeah, what? it's beautiful tuna. Unbelievable. Yeah, oh good. Thank you. Unbelievable. Honey. You're the best. Well, you know what? Speaking of the best, if you want to know more about what she does, you can certainly find out this recipe on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, or you can go to M NBC. NBC Miami. That's Michelle Bernstein Catering Miami. So mbcmiami.com, or just look me up, Chef Michelle Bernstein, and come to our restaurants and have our cocktails. They're pretty darn good. Yeah, they can. I don't know how it could be any better than this. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> well, a little bit of Rick with us today. He always gets oh, to have the good stuff. I What's know, up with that? Poke. Poke. Sorry, okay. I said it wrong. Yeah, I need the E with the yeah. accent on the end there. It's, it tastes good either way. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, there's lots of poke to go around in the Yanmar ASV Keys region. So let's check in with the queen of deep dropping, Captain Sarah Stanzik, to get some tips. Go for it, Sarah. Everyone here from the Yanmar ASV Keys region. This is a type of fishing that I am obviously quite familiar with, as you all can imagine. The cool thing about the Keys is that we have several different target fish for deep dropping available from queen snapper, tilefish to grouper species, and the ultimate deep, deep drop prize, which to me, of course, is a swordfish. You wanna start in around 400 to 1,000 feet deep is kind of the realm for deep dropping, but it can be deeper than this. We like to use the Hooker Electric Pen 50 setup as our go-to rig, or the Pen Fathom 40 high-speed reel is a great option if you are not having to turn their handle so many times if you want to use conventional gear. We like to use chicken rigs or a multiple hook setup is common with frozen squid or cut bait like barracuda chunks. You wanna use a five pound average weight for electric reels and a one to two pound weight for hand cranking. And here's a picture of a snowball, we call them, or a snowy grouper for fun. It was much less windy when we caught this on the Jala Sport X3 offshore. So not recently, but it was a nice grouper <laughs> I caught on the X3 a couple months ago. Nice. Very nice. Cool. Tell us about the mahi. Moving offshore to mahi, it's been a good mahi bite despite all the winds recently. The winds have been crazy here in the Keys, average like 15 to 20 knots lately, but the bigger boats have gone offshore lately and they've done well. I've seen multiple racks full of schoolie size up to some nice gaffer fish. So the mahi have been out there, it's 500 to 1,000 feet deep is where they've been. So head offshore, look for birds diving down on weed or debris. Live pilchers are good for bait, but also cut squid and anything like that. Dead bait options are good, too. Here's a nice catch from one of our charter boats, the marina, the provider. He's got a nice catch of mahi right there in that picture. Oh, yeah, that's a yeah, that's good haul there, Sarah. Yeah, Tell, solid. Let's go to the bonefish. Tell us about that. Bonefish. You know, the wind doesn't really hurt the bonefishing here if you're going to bait fish for them. It's harder for people who are going to fly fish, but... It's been really windy, like I said, the past week or, you know, two weeks even. 
but it's really fun to dead bait for those bonefish on the flats. You know, the water's kind of dirty and stirred up, but that honestly helps the bonefishing if you're going to dead bait for them. So if you, you know, pull up on the flats and just cast some shrimp out there and dead bait, we call it, you'll have a pretty good luck at catching them when the water, you know, when the wind is like it's been and the water's kind of dusty and stirred up. You know, because they're really smart and spooky. They can see your hooks. They can see your line. But they can smell. Most importantly, they smell your bait. So if if the wind is, you know, like high, like it's been, it kind of makes the water dirty. And it, it helps you as an angler if you're dead baiting because it kind of hides your bait. So as you can see, you know, our, our local captains have been using this method to catch them lately. And here's a double header caught by Captain Bill Bassett out of Bud and Mary's. Very nice. Hey, double header of bonefish. That's tough to do, I know, from experience. Oh, yeah. So, all right. I won't complain about that any day. That's right. All right. Tell us about the sharks. Oh, well, we're just getting out of Shark Week on the Discovery Channel. I think it was Shark Week last week. So there's been lots of shark action around. I thought I'd mention them on the report. Plenty of fish to catch. You know, sharks are all over the place, offshore, inshore. All you really need is some kind of a, you know, cup bait, a carcass, any kind of chum. You can target anything from small bonnet heads on the flats to big lemon sharks and bull sharks and deeper water in the channels. All you need is some good elbow grease and some good bait because, you know, if you hook up one of those big bull sharks in the bay, you'll have a good fight and a good workout against you. Just make sure you use a knife and cut that line, of course, to release the shark safely and keep all your fingers. <laughs> hey, Sarah, I got a quick question for you. Going back to the bonefish. You know, I, I know Rick has told me that um, when it's windy like that and stirred up, you can kind of jump a uh, chum with some shrimp, like pieces of shrimp. So is that something that you guys are doing right now as well? Oh, for sure. We call that like dredging kind of where we, we you know, we'll throw shrimp out with like a, a little like shovel, little, you know, chunk shrimp out over the bait, over the flats and bait flats like that. And when they would dredge for the bonefish, and Rick actually texted me this afternoon because he's down here right now filming for his other show, and he told me he caught two bonefish this afternoon. I think using that method, so it is productive. Yeah, to, to chum up the bonefish is totally good to do in the windy conditions that we've had. Uh, you know, I would say any, if you can catch a bonefish, no matter how you do it, it's going to be fun and and memorable. So however you want to sure. do it, get it done. All right. Sarah. Any bonefish is a good bonefish. That's true. That's right. All right, thank you so much. Here are the shallow sport boats hot spots for the Keys region. Inshore, bonefish on the flats using live shrimp, like we were talking about, has been the way to get consistent bites as sight fishing for them can be tough under those uh, current windy conditions. And then offshore, mangrove snapper are still spawning on the reefs. Use a chum bag and live shrimp on a jig head to catch them in 40 to 80 foot of water. Tommy, I don't know if you remember, but Kaz and Randy Tao hated catching bonefish, hated going fishing for bonefish. And oh, yeah. It's Sarah's favorite species. I, hey, they're fun. I go. love bonefish. There it's, you go. Great. To each their I'm own. Sarah. Okay. <laughs> Team Sarah. Okay, now let's take a look at some tournaments going on in the Florida Keys. First, we have the Herman Lucerne Memorial Backcountry Fishing Championship, where anglers fish only in the boundaries of the Everglades National Park, areas that Lucerne favored to target tarpon, redfish, snook, sea trout, snapper, bonefish, black drum, or bass. And then next we have the Take Stock in Children Backcountry Challenge, where trophies for trout, snook, and redfish are awarded in this annual fundraiser, supporting local vocational scholarships. And then we have the Take Stock in Children Scholarships. Oh, Take Stock in Children Scholarships. Then we have the Ladies Let's Go Fishing Fever Inshore Offshore Tournament, where female fishing fans immerse themselves in an annual weekend seminar to learn inshore, offshore, bottom, and fly fishing techniques and compete in a tournament designed for beginners. And finally, the Isla Morada All Tackle Bonefish and Permit Championship, dubbed the Fall All Tackle Three-Day Challenge, which attracts energized newcomers to face seasoned veterans in a competition that has taken place since 1970. Wow. 1970. I'm a 90s baby, so. There's a lot of stuff going it's a, on. There's a lot. There's a lot. It's jamming. It's jamming <laughs> yeah. down there. It's jamming. Go to <laughs> flakeys.com for more information on those. But now we're making another drop up in the Real Legends Central East region with Captain Jim Ross. And wait until you see the size of the lobsters. I'm sorry. They're just mind blowing. Okay. Hi, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell everybody. I'm sorry, I'm just so excited. <laughs> just wait till you see these things. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, 
You know, in the Central East, Bell's uh, Real Legends region is just as popular as it is in many other parts of the state. And here's a few reasons why. One, you typically don't have to deal with bull sharks and sandbar sharks stealing your fillets when you actually hook something. And two, just about every deep water species of fish that can be caught in these depths, you know, 800, 600, 400, even 400 feet of water, taste really good. One thing anglers can use to help them uh, be more successful in their deep drop trolling efforts is a Rodan trolling motor. A lot of boats now are getting them and it absolutely is just critical for helping you maintain boat control and line presentation in those deeper areas. Uh, having the ability to steer and keep that bow, you know, keep them from tangling is great. Another thing you can do is either use live croakers, grunts, or a belly strip from a barracuda or a dolphin or a bonita. They tend to um, keep the smaller fish off your lines and they're much more durable than squid most of the time. I was talking with Captain Eric Myers at slightlyobsessedfishing.com and he does most of his deep drop fishing for yellow edge grouper in like 500 to 600 feet of water, but he prefers to fish like seven to 800 feet of water for the tile fish around here. Swordfish action in my region is usually pretty good, but you have to get out there you know, around those schools of squid in the daytime around 1,500 to 1,800 feet of water. And I've got a couple of pictures that Captain Eric from Slightly Obsessed Fishing sent me. One is a yellow edge grouper. And if you haven't eaten one of those, you need to. They are delicious. Mm. And two, I've got Captain Eric with a golden tile fish here. And of course, that's a stud of a tile fish right there. <laughs> and those things eat just as good as those yellow edges. Heck yeah, now, talking one. about those lobsters, Brie, <laughs> we've got cold water that's moved into the region right now. And the upwellings on the local reefs and wrecks have really slowed the fishing a lot uh, in many of those areas that we were doing really good. So instead of suffering the effects of cold water, it's time that you guys and gals go out there and embrace it. Roddy Core is one of the guys that is telling me that it's made the lobstering much easier. He's a Port Canaveral angler, and he's been diving the reefs mainly in 70 to 80 feet of water during the mini season. And the reefs, he said, are natural limestone, and they're holding really good numbers of lobster right now, much more so than you know seeing uh, them around any kind of wrecks or artificial structure. He says the bottom temperature was around 61 degrees, and that's really cool, even though the top temperature was about 82 to 84. He says it's really cool because it keeps a lot of the sharks away. It pushes them out and so that he doesn't have to deal with sharks while he's down there trying to grab those lobsters. Now, I, we've got a lot of uh, lobsters right now that have eggs in them, so just be careful when you're grabbing them. Uh, if, it's got, if, it's, if it's an egg bearing, it has to go back in the water, uh, but you know, August and September when they spawn, then after that you can grab them. And we've got uh, our average lobster running two to four pounds and we've got some slightly sl uh, slightly bigger ones. I've got Roddy here with another picture with his friend with a couple of nice ones that they had. And, uh, Whoa. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I'm talking just about. Gets and then me. of course we've got Roddy just holding a couple of other lobsters that they got as well. So we've got some good ones up here. Heck yeah. Now swinging in shore, guys, we've got snook and the, the bite remains strong underneath the mangrove trees, around docks, in all three lagoons right now. Uh, the, you know, because the, the redfish have kind of been dwindling, the populations of redfish haven't been as good, the snook seem to be filling that void. And what's really cool is right now you can catch them on a lot of different things. Shrimp, finger mullet, pigfish, croakers, uh, finger, um, even full-size mullet if you're getting some of those big ones. And saltwater assassin three inch shad are working really well in the alewife, baby bass, and gold pepper shiner colors. You want to rig those on a small weedless weighted worm hook. And hang on, our average lagoon snook is running about 18 to 26 inches. Uh, we had lost one yesterday that was probably pushing 37 to 38 though. So there's some big ones out there. And my last species, speckled trout. They're holding in the same places uh, and eating the same live baits as the snook. <clears throat> You'll find them along those drop-offs in the flats as well, especially later in the day, and around residential canals as well. Now, fly anglers can do really good with streamer patterns, and a lefty's deceiver, a clouser minnow, or other you know bait fish style pattern in the two to four inch range will catch your trout up to 20 inches. Red and white, yellow and uh, red and yellow, green and white, and olive and white color patterns are working best. I've got a picture here of one we caught on fly the other day in the Banana River. And this was our first uh, first fish of the morning. Nice little cast against those mangroves in the background and a nice fat little chunky speckled trout. That's cool, Jim. Hey, any, nice, Jim. Any, any trout on fly, any fish on fly yeah. is cool. So great report, yeah. Jim. Good to see you, man. Thanks so much. Here are Thanks, the, guys. Y'all have a great day. You too. Thanks, Here are the Rodan Marine System hotspots for the Central East region. Inshore, look for juvenile tarpon near residential canals, dredge holes and creek mouths where glass minnow pods are found, and then use small lures or flies to entice them to strike. And offshore, those lobster on the natural limestone reefs in 45 to 90 feet of water 
Find areas with good bottom visibility and work them thoroughly for lobster to eight pounds. I want it. Eight pound lobster. lobster fever over here, I'm telling yeah, you. All right, <laughs> I know. Coming right up, we're seeing what lies beneath in the R&R Tackle Southeast region. But first, we're seeing what lies on the CCA workbench for Taco Marine New Products with Dave Farrell. Yes, we are. And we're going to be talking about these right here. Some nice lures. Ooh. Yeah. Ronnie pretty pretty. Like some Ronnie pretty Houston pretty. Like <laughs> we'll be back. He loves them. He loves them. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you <laughs> by Alta Equipment Company where uptime matters. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Fenwick, feel everything. Tin Cup Mountain Whiskey. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. Best lures, period. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. All right, Dave, we're here at the CCA workbench once again for the yep. Talk Marine new products. We got yep. some cool stuff here, it looks Trolling like. Trolling the edge we are, that's for sure. Next, we're gonna, first off, not even next, first, we're going to talk about the uh, Taco Marine Outrigger Line Tensioner. And what this thing does is, figure this is the top of your gunnel. Okay. And you got your outrigger coming down. Your halyard tensioner system runs right straight through this little mushroom, through these two cams right here. And when it comes through these cams, it locks. Locks it up. That's you cool. just pull it down straight and let go, and it'll lock at that tension. And that's very important when you're using outriggers and halyards. If you don't have the right tension, if it's too loose, everything's bouncing around, getting tangled up. If it's too tight, your mate's, you know, working, like a, right. working like a dog trying to get his stuff up and out. So, yeah, you want to you try to uh, have nice, a nice one. Flush, nice. Yeah, and that, you know, that one's made out of all stainless steel there. You just use a three-quarter inch bit. Go right down through your beautiful teak gunnel there. <laughs> Make sure you know where you're putting it before you drill right, the hole. Right. It's got a nice mushroom head, like I said. It's a real smooth area. No line won't, and any other things won't snag on it. So uh, it'll go, it'll fit anywhere from one inch to two and a half inch thick gunnels, and you know, it'll adjust to that thickness. Very so cool. go to tacomarine.com to get you one of those. If you're, if you're gonna run outriggers on a really nice boat, you need to have that. You should have a yep. really nice way to tension up your outrigger halyards. What we got here? This is the StarTron Ring Clean Plus. And you know, we talk about all the Star, StarTron fuel additives and whatnot, but this, this is the Ring uh, Clean Plus. It comes with an enzyme as well as just the, uh, the regular uh, Ring Clean. And it's formulated to control all the new uh, deposits and keep uh, and dissolve the old ones. So it dissolves okay. all the old stuff and it keeps the new stuff from coming in. And uh, it makes fuel burn better, you get better MPG, it keeps the carbs and all the fuel lines clean and uh, it treats 160 gallons, that little bottle I, right I there. I know a couple guys that, that are real impressed with this stuff. One they ounce, use it. treats great. tens gallons, you know, I, it it, and it works in any gasoline engine. I Everything in my yard has some star trot in yep. it. Star, <laughs> Starbright.com, you get you some uh, Ring Clean Plus. All right, these are Ronnie Houston specials, right? Yes, yeah, he's a Berkeley these hijacker. He likes the bigger. He likes the bigger the one. Twenty. One. Right? Yeah, but this is the hundred. It's uh, made to target aggressive schooling fish on the surface. Uh, it's got real nice flat sides. You flash really good. It really creates a big disturbance on the water. It's got those three treble hooks in it. So anything that comes Ooh, up, like it, that. anything that comes up and gives it a sniff is going to get hooked in there. Three uh, X anti rust hooks. You know, it comes in ten colors, ten different colors, and I think they're about two thirds of an ounce for each one. I like one. this. I mean, that, this is a great time of year to toss the top waters. A lot of mullet that look bass, just like that. Bass and yeah, bass and, too. They, right? They're they're starting it's to like school on the shad exactly, and that'll work too. And it's got a real nice weight in the tail, so you can throw it a long way. Mm -hmm. These things really fly really good. So go to BerkeleyFishing.com to get your hijacker. I like these hooks on here too. Yeah, those those are those fusion hooks. Last but not least, we got some swordfish from. Leader, what's a wind on leader from Diamond? Uh, they come in either 250 or 300 pound test, 150 foot lengths in clear white or smoke blue colors. It goes along uh, with the deep drop stuff. Exactly, we're talking about, right? we're talking about deep dropping. Swordfish is one of those fish in the daytime. You can, if you can keep your bait down there close to the bottom, that's where they're eating. Uh, good swordfish uh, leader because it's a wind on and a real heavy wind on. You could even use it for blue marlins easily. But if, if you're using this for, for the swordfish, it allows you to reel your rig all the way up so you don't have to 
you know, leader it with by hand once That's the good, swivel yeah. comes up because the swivel won't go through your guides. This will wind all the way up to your main bite leader, and that way you can get a you know good gaff into that swordfish. That or makes a lot of sense. Reach over and cut them off and let them go. All right, Dave. Diamondfishing.com to get your swordfish leader. Good stuff, man. Bring hey, on. guys. Good job. All right, well, Captain Jimbo Thomas is giving us some deep drop 101 in the r, r Tackle Southeast region. But first, we want to congratulate him and his brother Rick for the Thomas Flyer tagging their 3,000th dolphin for the wow. Dolphin Research Center. Congrats, guys. That is so awesome. Keep it up. Jimbo. Hey. <laughs> hey, Bree. Hey, Tommy. Hey. hey, Dave. Did you hear me? I congratulated you on your 3,000th dolphin tag. Well, thank you. You're welcome. What do we got Gotta for this get week? 3,000 more. <laughs> Go for it. So, now we're talking about deep dropping, which is basically bottom fishing at great depths using electric reels. And it's more popular today than ever. Just about every offshore boat you see has one or more electric reels sitting in the rod holders. <clears throat> now, deep drop rate, uh, depths range anywhere from 500 feet on out and braided line is a must the whole bottom at these great depths now in the southeast region there's a number of excellent eating species that we fish for golden and blue tile fish snow and yellow edge grouper yellow eye and queen snapper black belly rose fish swordfish and barrel fish those are the most commonly targeted species now, a deep drop rig, which is basically a heavy-duty chicken rig, is a basic rig for most everything except when you're dropping for a swordfish. And the amount of weight is determined on the current and the depth, which is anywhere from 3 to 15 pounds. And lights are commonly attached above the rigs. Now, favorite baits are squid, bonita strips, and barracuda chunks. But first, you got to find those fish, whether you're going to a known spot or searching for a new one, a good bottom machine and GPS plotter are, are a must. Now, most of these deep spot, deep drop spots are ledges, ridges, and humps versus wrecks. So knowing where to drop your bait and setting up your drift are crucial if you want to be successful. And just like with every other type of fishing, some days those fish bite and some days they don't. Now, I got a photo here. And this is a golden tile fish, which are commonly caught off the southeast region. And these nice ones were caught off Key Biscayne in roughly 600 feet of water. Very nice. Now move, yep, that, that's a, always a old standby when some other fish aren't biting. But now moving in a little closer to shore, the nighttime uh, mangrove snapper bite is still happening. The mangroves, which have been in the two to seven pound range, they're being found on the outside reef anywhere from 40 to 80 feet of water, and they start to bite just after dark, uh, you know, sometimes up to midnight even. Now look for marks on the fish finder or just anchor up over some good bottom and try to avoid anchoring on top of the reef, but instead look for a hard, ledgy bottom with some sea fans on the outside of the reef and fish with a knocker rig. Use just enough weight to hold bottom in a 30-pound mono or fluoro leader, 1-0 to 3 hooks. Best baits have been sardines, Ballyhoo plugs and cut bonita. Now the uh, party boat reward out of Miami Marina, they've been doing night trips. They've been finding mangrove snappers along with a mix of yellowtails and muttons on the reef so government cut. And they've been catching their limits on most nights. But the, the sharks have been eating a lot of fish. That's the only drawback. Now, I got another photo and this is one of the many big mangroves that the reward's been catching on the outside reef off Miami. Now moving inshore, Catch and release snook fishing in the inlets, still our best bet. The snook are schooled up in all the inlets of the region. They're being caught on live pilchards, herrings, pinfish, croakers, and mullet. You want to fish them near the bottom using a Jupiter rig. A lot of these fish have been big, like up in the 20 pound range. So you want to use 40 to 50 pound uh, fluoro leaders, 5 to 6 circle hooks. If you don't have any live bait, you can try working R&R &R flare hawk jigs in pink or chartreuse or four inch gulp r and r kiko or bass assassin jerk baits along the bottom and both the incoming and outgoing tides have been good early in the mornings or late in the afternoons into the evenings and then the flats of south biscayne bay they've been producing some really good bonefish and permit fishing now any of the outside flats from soldiers key south angel fish creek they've been really good especially on the incoming tide and these tides we've had lately have been extremely low so there's been a lot of moving on the a lot of water 
moving on that incoming tide. Small blue crab is what the permit and bones have been feeding best on. Also, crab pattern flies have been working along with live shrimp. You want to get out there early in the morning before those flats get too hot up to the boiling point. That's right, Jimbo. You got to get out early this time of year, man. You sweat to death otherwise. Uh, thanks, Jimbo. Here are the what are we smoking fish dip hot spots for the southeast region. Inshore, fish live crabs for permit and bonefish on the outside flats of Biscayne Bay. And then offshore, look for nighttime snapper on the edges of the outside reef using cut bait on the bottom. 3,000 tagged dolphin. That's a lot. That's awesome. And he goes, we're going to get 3,000 more. You go, Thomas Flyer, you go. You get it. <laughs> All right, Tommy, the Garmin Panhandle and Discover Crystal River Northwest regions have some, actual, they have some deep drop numbers they're giving to us next. Oh. So y'all better stay tuned. You won't want to miss those. I think I got their attention. Yeah. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Fenwick, feel everything. Strike Zone Fishing, Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing, book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. And Yanmar ASV, a leader in compact equipment. Welcome back, everyone. This just in from Pat Deneen in the Garmin Panhandle region. No numbers will be given, but he is going to tell mm. us how to catch some bottom dwellers you might find there. Go for it, Pat. Hey, Bree and Tommy. Uh, tell you what, deep dropping, it has become really popular in the Northern Gulf. Really, the last five or six years, it's, it's just exploded. Uh, target species inv include swordfish, tilefish, groupers, and snappers. And, and, and all the deep drop rigs include at least one light source and, and a natural bait. The, the swordfish rigs are a sacrificial weight, a, a light fairly close to the bait, and another weight, uh, and the weight, and then often another light well up the leader. Uh, to target the swordfish, you know, you look in 1,200 to 1,800 feet of water uh, around the spur, either north or east of the spur, and also along the steps. Uh, baits for sword fishing includes uh, skirted bonita, a dolphin strip or either a naked or a skirted squid. And then for the for the other fishes, the snappers, the tilefish, the groupers, those rigs involve five or more circle hooks above a heavy weight with a light source at the top of the swivel. Uh, you can use whatever cut bait you have available. Bonita ladyfish are really good for, for deep dropping, but softer baits like boss or mackerel, you're gonna want to definitely salt them before you use them. That's gonna firm them up. They're gonna stay on the hook much, much better. Uh, for the tilefish, Drop the, uh, drift the mud bottom areas in 900 to 1,000 feet of water on the north side of the spur and also north of the steps. For the snapper and grouper, you're gonna wanna find some hard bottom, some structure. So target structure in 600 to 1,000 feet of water. A uh, good chart of the cross gulf pipeline, basically the, the pipeline that goes from Louisiana to Tampa. It's a great start, of, a great place to start to find some productive hard bottom areas. But really, whatever deep drop species you're after, a few drops go offshore, usually put some pretty good eating fish in the box, especially if the trolling slow, make a few drops. Um, staying offshore, the dolphin fishing has been pretty good the past couple of weeks, both well offshore and also closer in. Uh, bigger fish are mostly going to be found out deep, but floating objects near shore are often holding lots of smaller chicken dolphins. For the smaller fish, cut bait and jigs on light spin and tackle can be a lot of fun. A little bit of chumming with cut bait will keep that school nearby and, and also feeding aggressively offshore beyond the 100 fathom curve. Uh, Ballyhoo and smaller plugs troll along weed lines and around floaters can produce a much better grade of mahi. Again, have some spin and tackle rigged and ready with either cut bait, live bait, or jigs. Because if, if you go and buy some of that floating structure and the, and the dolphins are still there, but they quit biting, you know, shut her down and come up and, and start using that spin and tackle. Offshore, the dolphin can run north of 20 pounds, while near shore, the fish are usually less than five pounds, but they've been pretty numerous near shore. Uh, moving inshore, inshore, reports of big Spanish mackerel are coming from all the bays in the panhandle. They are being caught on the deeper grass flat edges, off the roll downs, and on the points. I uh, spoke with Captain Todd Jones in Panama City. 
he's reporting his best action is on the falling tide, chumming and free lining with small menhaden. Live shrimp, either free line or suspended under float, are also very effective. A long shank hook on your live bait or a trace of 40 or 50 pound mono is going to minimize the cutoffs. And then over towards Pensacola, Captain West Rose, where he swears by the chugger style topwater baits, fish over grass in 8 to 10 feet of water. And there's some really good quality Spanish being caught up to and over 5 pounds. They're great eating if cooked fresh, they don't freeze well. And Captain Todd sent in a really nice picture of a Spanish mackerel caught over in Panama City while freelining for life, uh, freelining men hating. And Tommy, that's a pretty fish. I don't know how you like about Spanish, but that's some good eating right there. Yeah, that's a good one there, Pat. All right, tell us about the trout, man. Yeah, Tommy, finally in short, uh, Captain Sean Chalker over in Port St. Joe, he reports good trout fishing early and late on the deeper grass edges in St. Joe Bay. The water inshore is really warm. I mean, pushing 90 degrees right now. So these deeper edges are the places to be. Bigger fish are coming by live bait with pilchard, spot minnows, croakers, and pinfish, either free-lined or lightly weighted. Seed in the area that you're fishing with live chum will definitely help fire up the bite. Lure fishermen should go with a topwater bait at first light and a quarter-ounce uh, jig head with, with a paddle tail soft plastic later in the day. Chicken on a chain or a chartreuse with a pink paddle tail is always good combinations for speckled trout trout are running up to and over 20 inches right now i'm with you pat that chicken on a chain is a good great color actually chicken on a chain, chicken yeah, on a chain. it really is <laughs> all right man thanks so much here are the blue water outrigger hot spots for the panhandle region inshore troll live cigar minnows and herring for king mackerel and dolphin over bottom structure and around bait schools and then offshore mangrove snapper on live pilchards and shrimp around the destin bridge well, Tommy, lucky <laughs> us, turn? you are, kind of, you are here in the studio, so why don't you tell us all about the deep dropsies in the Alto Equipment Northeast The deep region. dropsies, well, you know, we Go do have a few, very few people that like to deep drop in our region, so... Mm -hmm. Um, and it does happen, we have to go way out, but I'm gonna kind of skip the deep drop in this time and talk about the snapper bite we got going on right now. It's really good. You know, I spoke to a couple of our offshore snapper experts this week. You know, they tell me that both the mangrove and the mutton snappers have been chewing big time. <clears throat> Captain Jimmy Laidler from the Legend Fishing Charters, he tells me he's been catching big numbers of mangroves in that 120 to 140 foot range just east of St. Augustine. Now, most of his fish are coming from a flat line after you chum them up, you know, you get them up towards the surface using chunk sardines or a variety of other cut baits. And I also spoke to Captain Jason Hadges from J-Hook Fishing Charters. He told me the same with lots of schooled up mangoes, but he's catching some bonus big amberjack in those same areas, so get ready to hold on. And Captain Adam Jeffrey from Real Dream Charters gave me a great mutton snapper report. He told, he's been, he told me he's been catching some muttons this year, more muttons this year than he can ever remember. Now, Captain Adam said that he's actually seen a little less in the way of mangrove snapper, but you know what? Catching some 15 pound muttons, that's a pretty nice alternative. Yeah, it's And like that. Uh, it's not a bad deal. I got a couple pictures here. First one, you know, Captain Jimmy Laidler sent me this photo of Brandon Woods with one of those big Northeast Florida mangrove snappers. We get some monsters up See, there. See, this is what I call the deep dropsies. It's not quite deep dropping, it's just oh, a dropsie. It, it's right. kind of okay. sort of deep. Yeah, you know? sure. Next photo. Next <laughs> Captain Jason Hadges, he sent me this picture. This is a pretty killer mangrove day wow. that these guys had. I mean, that's some good eating right there. So good job, guys. Now, also offshore, Captain Adam Jeffrey also gave me a great grouper report this week. Adam said that bite has been a little hit or miss the last couple of weeks with some strong current. On those days, it makes it a little tough to get to the bottom and fish the way he wants to. But the days where the current's been slow, they've been able to get some really nice gags to go along with those snappers I was talking about. Now he's been fishing in those 120 to 150 foot depths. He's using a whole or a halved Boston mackerel, some big baits. You know, Captain Adam also said he's been doing well with live grunts or even live goggle eyes. And I've got another picture here. This is Greg Zarek with one of those giant groupers. Look how stoked he is. He recently caught with Adam on The Real Dream. Adam catches some monster Dang. groupers, man. That would. That's, he's got his jaw on the, on the boat. He's got a shotgun going on. He is. I would he's be stoked, stoked if I caught that, that fish is too. an awesome fish. 
All right, Bree, we're moving inshore Let's the flounder. You know, you can tell it's the middle of summer because the best bite going on right now inshore is still gonna be the flounder. Even with the really hot air and water temperatures, those flounder, they're still chewing. And we have a great early morning outgoing tide this weekend. It's gonna set up perfect to target some flounder. The creeks closer to the inlets where that water is a little cleaner, they're holding good numbers of flounder on the last of the outgoing tide. Now those smaller runouts along the ICW, they're also holding some fish. I'm talking, I'm talking like the little tiny little runouts. Don't, don't overlook those little tiny runouts. They're gonna sit there. And there's some uh, absolutely perfect size finger mullet schools swimming throughout the region right now. Toss the cast nap, load up on those little tasty morsels because there isn't a better flounder bait than those guys. Rig them on a jig head or a fish finder rig with enough weight to hold the bottom and you're gonna be set. And most of those flounder, they're in the 14 inch range, but there's definitely some bigger ones hanging around as well. Now also inshore, like a lot of the other guys are talking this week, the tarpon. You know, we're getting into the best time of year for the big tarpon in the Northeast region. The tarpon, they're feeding in the bait pods along the beach. And there's been some really big tarpon hanging out behind the shrimp boats. I spoke to multiple captains this week that have been fishing the beach pretty much exclusively for those tarpon over the past couple of weeks. And they tell me the bite has been really good and, and they're right, it really has been. And I talk about it a lot this time of year and it's really pretty easy, you know, kind of, sort of easy. Just cruise the beach until you find some pogies and then approach those pogies slowly. Watch for busting or rolling fish. Now I like to use a long six to 10 foot, 40 to 60 pound fluorocarbon leader depending on what the water clarity looks like with a six to 10 out circle hook, hook that depends on the bait size. And a lot of guys and anglers like to use a float as well. I just, for me personally, I just don't like seeing a tarpon jump with a big cork hanging out of his mouth, but let the tarpon have the bait for a few seconds and then just slowly reel tight once he gets it. Make sure that you bow to that fish when they jump. That's bow to the king. Bow to the king. I mean, that's, Easier said than done, especially yeah. if you've never done it before, yeah. but hey, keep it in Your mind. Your instinct is to not. That's right. <laughs> and I got one last picture here. This is when you should be bowing. This is a shot that I took of a big angry tarpon oh. that my client hooked out of one of those pogey pods on the beach. And that's that's one of that's my favorite things to do is get pictures of those guys in the oh, air no. like that. With no cork. And it's really easy. Well, kind of uh, sort of easy, but not really easy. Well, it's easy to it's easy to locate the fish if you're stealthy. You gotta be stealthy. Don't run right into that pogey pod with your big motor. Stop a little short, throw the trolling motor down, or just drift in. Stealth is the name stealthy. of the game. Be stealthy. All be right. Stealthy. Let's take a look at your strike zone hot spots for the northeast region, shall we? All right. You know, hey, the flounder on the last of the early morning outgoing tide, target the creek bends and small runouts with a small finger mullet on a jig or a fish finder rig. And then offshore, those mangrove and mutton snapper in the 120 to 150 foot depths, chum with those chunk sardines to get the fish up in the water column. All right. Well, don't worry. We haven't forgotten about y'all in the Discover Crystal River northwest region. We've got your report ready to go right after this break. So stay with us right here on the Florida Insider Fishing report oh yeah just checking you're still with me <laughs> <laughs> the florida insider fishing report is brought to you by yamaha reliability starts here shallow sport pen let the battle begin the florida keys and key west come as you are the igfa every fish every water every angler since 1939 Island Lures, Tournament Tackle, Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy, Fishing for Adventure, and Taco Marine, Troll the Edge. Today's Power Pole Tip of the Week is about using dual poles. Now guys, I love the fact that with dual poles, I can create total boat control. Now when I approach a dock or if I approach a point or an oyster bar, everything is in the angle of my cast in most fishing conditions. So what I try to do is understand exactly the presentation that I want to make with my lure and set the boat up by so doing that. So what ends up happening is we can approach a dock, we can approach that oyster bar, 
and I'm going to put the boat so that I can compensate for the wind as well as the current. And dual poles allow me to do that. Most of the time, if you have a single pole, you're always going to drift down current or even down wind. Or the wind might blow you across the current. So you don't have the total control that you have with duals. So keep that in mind that with duals, you're going to have the total boat control. And that's today's Power Pole Tip of the Week. Good tip, Rick. Hey, Always. anything power pole, it's, it's, all it's all good stuff. It's all good man. stuff. All right, if you're headed to the depths of the Discover Crystal River Northwest region, it's going to be worth it. So let's find out why with Captain Jeff Hageman. Go for it, Hag. You're going to burn some gas, but you're going to have plenty to bring home to eat. We have some great deep dropping on our, on our coast. Uh, with today's three, four engine uh, motor boats we got now, the anglers are finding just how good our coast is. 75 to 130 plus miles you're going to be making a run to uh, but once you get out there we've got some excellent like i said deep drop rig uh, deep drop fishing captain rob davenport of big nasty charters kind of specializes that out of st pete uh, deep dropping has been good right now and anywhere from 500 to a thousand feet of water he's catching a variety of species from big kitty mitchells queen snapper blue line tiles yellow edge um, and some warsaws out there and some good golden tiles in the deeper areas. What you need for that, good high-speed electric reel, 100-pound 100 uh, pound braid, three-hook chicken rig, does the trick, 5-aught to 12-aught hook, depending on what you're fishing for. If you're fishing for those bigger snowies and those grouper, go to a bigger size hook. Uh, depending on what you're fishing for and the current you've got, anywhere from 2 to 5 pounds of lead, depending on that current. And look for hard bottom with most of the species once you get out there. You get out in that 600 feet and you've never done this before, get out there to start looking for a hard mark on your bottom machine. And little, I mean, it's very small what you're looking for. And use your bottom um, your bottom machine to zoom in on that bottom. Your bottom machines, most of them have a zoom, and you want to use that to find these spots out there. Uh, some of the shallower stuff, um, we got Kitty Mitchells in, and you want to use live baits. But most of the stuff that's going to be on that rock bottom, you're going to be using squid. Or barracuda strips on that mud bottom is where you're going to find those goldens and those golden tiles are probably one of my favorite to eat and they're absolutely awesome but i've got a photo here of a beautiful kitty mitchell oh man that is a pretty Caught fish right there 600 feet of water yeah all right jeff tell me about the wahoo we got going on the wahoo bite's been really good right now at st pete we got a ton of them around this summer He's been catching them mostly in 80 to 120 feet of water, trolling plugs, ballyhoo. Uh, when you're wreck fishing, keep a flat line out the back. A lot of guys are catching them like that. Or on hard bottom, keep a live blue runner or a thread fin out the back, which is really good floating over the wreck. And I've got a picture here from Jason Stocks with a beautiful West Coast Wahoo. Oh, man, they are so cool when they're lit so up like awesome. that. Well, oh, they're beautiful, Yum. aren't they? Yeah, really cool. All right, what fishing we got right some now, snook. inshore, snook fishing has been really good. It's been, our summers are always good around the beaches, passes, spoil islands, barrier islands, points, mangroves. Anything with good current flows right now is where the fish are going to be concentrated. Pinfish, sardines, pigfish, pigfish, I mean a grunt. We call them pigfish here. Um, all those live baits work really good. White bait work really good. Um, white turbo shads. And in a jerk bait or in a turbo shed works really good from Bass Assassin. Or swimming plugs right now are working really good. Most of our fish right now are averaging anywhere from 25 to 40 inches, and they're being caught quite regularly. Staying inshore, Captain Jimmy Huddleston of CaptainHud.com reports a redfish bite continues to be good on these better lunar tides. Schools of reds have been pushing onto the grass flats on those early morning incoming tides. Anglers have been best of luck using sardines in their cork and fishing the mangrove edges and shorelines and oyster bars. When that flood tide gets up there in the trees on those big tides, cut bait like ladyfish, mullet, and you want to pitch them either right in the shadow line or if you can skip it underneath the mangroves, that's where you're going to catch your bigger redfish right now. All right, Jeff. Hey, man, I haven't talked to you in a while. How was your tarpon season this year? My tarpon season was great this year. I didn't miss any days because of weather. Um, we fished through that little tropical storm we had, still caught fish had plenty of them um we didn't lose many fish so we always had some fish to fish a lot of times on those new moons and full moons they'll go out and spawn and we'll lose a major portion of our fish 
we didn't do that this year. We we had pretty good trickle of fish the whole time we were down there. So awesome tarpon season. Awesome, awesome. Hear it. All right, thanks, Jeff. Here are the Ozella Keys Marina hotspots for the Northwest region. Inshore, snook on the beaches and passes, use pinfish and grunts for bait. And then offshore, mangrove snapper can be found on high relief structures in 25 to 75 feet of water. All right, well, that's all, folks. That's We've it. exhausted our deep drop tips, Let's keep going. tricks, pointers, and just about everything else to give you your ultimate shot in the dark this weekend. But don't get your lines all twisted up yet. Next, we're telling you what you're in for next week. Ooh, tin cup. That's what we're in for Ooh. next week. Yeah. I'm down with I'm that. Down. We'll be right back. So, yeah, Tommy's favorite thing. Tom, he didn't I was going to gonna say, it. Tommy should have been here next week. Coming back next week. Come on. I'm sure Rick can, you know, come on. fishing for. Sure. What's he fishing for? He's not on the keys right now. Well, yes. I'll be fishing for flounder at least. You'll be fishing for flounder. Yeah. You always send in amazing flounder photos, so we're expecting your flounder best bites good right next now. Next week. We need to go up there. And Dave, you're going to be talking we, about flounder we need to go, Tommy. We, we need to go up there. We are going to go. Tommy. Let's do it. We're going to go. Come maybe on. maybe not flounder. Why not? Because he's booked uh, until not flounder season. Uh, true, yeah, <laughs> that is true. All right, guys. Tommy, thank you so much for being here. Filling Thanks in for, for Rick. Me. Appreciate you. Pleasure. Dave, always appreciate you. Yeah, sure you do. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya.